I feel like I'm singing in a tin can. My broadcast mix just isn't sounding like it matches the room. Yep, you need room mics. Room mics or crowd mics are critical if you're gonna do in-ear monitors or a broadcast mix. With everything close mic to reduce noise, you lose some of that natural feeling. And when we've lost that loving feeling, whoa, that loving feeling, now it's gone. Gone, gone. Whoa, whoa, whoa. In today's video, I'm gonna show you what mics to use and where to place them to get the best results, no matter your budget. If you're new here, go ahead and mash the subscribe button, ding the little bell, and turn your notifications on to all. You don't wanna miss when I drop another video, and especially when I go live. Now you don't have to have expensive microphones to get started with crowd mics. If your budget is exactly zero, see if you can find some extra SM57s or SM58s lying around. If you do, you can put them on the front of the stage facing out, and spacing them is gonna help a lot, especially when you're running it to in-ear monitors. Mono is fine if you've got that, but stereo and spread out is way better. Be sure to roll up the high pass filter so that you get rid of any rumble or muddy feeling from the mics. Send that to your in-ear monitors or your broadcast mix and prepare to be amazed. Instantly, your singers are gonna be happier and it's more likely that they'll keep both in-ear monitors in. And that's gonna help them sing better and then your mix sounds better. Now, if they need help learning to mix their in-ear monitors, you can send them to this video over here. Now, if you're planning an upgrade or an install and you've got some budget for crowd mics, you'll wanna invest in shotgun microphones. Best case scenario is to hang them up high near the front of the stage, pointing out into the audience. Height is your friend when it comes to crowd mics because you wanna be able to get the biggest, widest picture of the crowd that you can. They have a very narrow pickup pattern, so if you keep them down low and someone is close to it in the front, it could be just them getting picked up by the microphone. And that's kinda awkward. Kinda when the weather reporter switches to that outdoor camera and there's a hornet crawling over it. Now let's take a look outside as we look over sunny Chicago. Ah! Now these microphones polar pattern or the direction by which they pick up sound is very narrow, but that narrow pickup pattern in the front comes at a price. We get a whole lot of rejection from the sides of the microphone, but the back of the microphone picks up as well. And this is the other reason why it's good to have it up high. If you've got the crowd mic right at the front of the stage and it's facing straight out, the back side of that microphone is gonna pick up any noisy drums, guitar amps, or monitor wedges on stage. So to avoid that and get more crowd and less drums and reject the sound from the speakers all at the same time, putting your microphones up high and angling them down into the crowd is a win-win-win. Except nobody has to wear a t-shirt with a picture of jazz babies playing the saxophone on it. At Forerunner Church, they've got the Sennheiser shotgun mics on the lighting truss, and they work great. Now the bummer of actually hanging these crowd mics is actually getting there and running the cable. Personally, I don't love getting out the scissor lift. If I can avoid it, I will. The only thing is, when they're way up high, you have to be really careful about how you point it. And when you're up in the rafters, all your directional senses kind of feel a little bit off, and it's hard to get it pointed just right. So here's a pro tip, get a laser pointer and put it right alongside the microphone. That way you can know exactly where the mic is pointing. Your goal when you have a little bit shorter room is to aim it about a third of the way into the crowd. You don't wanna be picking up reflections off the back wall, and you wanna be getting the best signal to noise ratio. You're trying to get the crowd as loud as you can. And the people that are much further away, they're not gonna be picked up by the microphone quite as well, unless you're in a really big space and the people are really loud. Anybody can blab on and on about this stuff, but you come here for the goods. So I'm gonna give you some audio examples of two different sets of crowd mics from the same room and the same performance. One stereo pair are Sennheiser shotgun mics hung up in the rafters near the speakers. The other pair are Heil PR-22s on the stage. It's important to know too that this is a place where the background vocals aren't singing from on stage. So everyone you hear in addition to the lead vocal are people in the crowd singing. Now, if this is making sense so far, type crowd down in the comments below. 
Now, if you're mixing broadcast from front of house or a dedicated console, you might want to include some of the ambience or the sound of the PA in your mix to make it feel like you're in the same space. In this case, you could either put the mics at front of house or in the audience. Although I don't recommend having a microphone right in the middle of the crowd. It's just kind of awkward. You can either put these at front of house facing back toward the stage or in the ceiling hanging down. Now you have to be careful not to add too much of this into your mix because the timing differences between the direct sound coming out of your console and the ambient sound that has to travel through the air and get to the microphones, that's going to be later. So we want to avoid timing issues and use these sparingly and even roll off some of the top end so that you don't hear two different hits on the snare drum or the cymbals. The other solution to this is to add a time delay to your direct signal so that it matches the timing of the ambient mics. But usually, I'm just using these mics sparingly and filtering them to add a little bit of that ambience. I'm not relying on them for the main part of my mix. They're the sprinkles, not the cake. I have two more warnings for you, but first, if you're mixing broadcasts and you want to take it up a notch, you can download my free guide, How to Lead Your Church Audio Stream Team. It'll help you identify what's holding you back and how you can make things better. There's a link down in the description below. Okay, first warning. If you're going to hang mics in the ceiling, make sure that they're not going to pick up HVAC noise. This is really hard to get out in post, and it's usually not totally consistent. So it might be nice and quiet one moment, and then it kicks on and you hear this It's not really fun. And the second warning is this. If you have mics at front of house, you have open mics at front of house. Your private conversation might not be so private anymore. That's it for this time. And remember, it's all about the low end, avoid the sound tech solo, and nobody leaves church humming the kick drum. We'll see you back here next time. <laughs>